Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Soup Bowl. On tonight's menu we have Chandela, the 1997 microprose game featuring the popular collectible card game Magic the Gathering, specifically the fourth edition of the game. Now, if you've never played Magic before, as the mighty Grind once said, don't worry, I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Let's just jump right in here, shall we? Now, difficulty level wise, this game is going to be hard no matter what. Um, I have beaten the game on Wizard once, it was not a fun experience, so let's just jump into Magician, which is probably challenging enough. Now, we can select our color. The game Magic basically centers around uh, wizards dueling each other, uh, knocking each other over the head using uh, a stack of cards. Yeah. Hmm. Now every spell, magic, creature, whatever is centered around a color, uh, a theme. And we can select the main color which we want for our game. Now there's five colors. The color red focuses around destruction, violence, um, it has a lot of fireballs and goblins and ogres and, and stuff like that. It's arguably my favorite color, especially outside of this game in the real world, you could say. Well, uh, we haven't played Magic for quite a while now um, with our friends, but when I do whip out my red deck, suddenly everyone stops playing and people call me a sore loser then because I have to resort to my red deck. Hmm. Anyway, white features around protection, healing magic. Um, their creatures are centered around angels and knights. Most of their creatures are not too powerful, but they're really defensive. It's a good color to use. It's a little bit slow. It's basically the the castling strategy of uh, of magic. You're gonna build a strong defense and then hopefully chip away at the enemy. Black is the complete opposite of that. It has no defense and it's all power, power, power. It focuses around death and destruction and mayhem. And You'll do a lot of damage to the enemy and in return you'll do a lot of damage to yourself or your own creatures. A really powerful color to use. Unfortunately for this game it's not really that good. Well, it's still a good color but uh, the problem for this game is when you get into uh, specific areas of the game you basically have to do a gauntlet, a series of um, of battles back to back and you do not heal in between so at some point you're just gonna end up killing yourself green is the power of or the, the color of nature, of life, it has a lot of healing magic um, most, mostly focuses around really powerful big creatures uh, not so much dragons, they're more uh, red territory, but uh, giant land worms, for example, and bears and boars and uh, elves as well. Mm. Drawback for green is that they don't really have a lot of direct damage, except for their creatures. So if they want to do anything, they have to go through their creatures, which is both a blessing and a curse. Blue focuses on control that's it. Just control. If you play with or if you play against blue you're gonna have a really long match and it's gonna be really frustrating and everyone will pull their hair out and everyone will, will insult your mother and it's awesome and it's cool and I love blue but we're not gonna play him. There. <laughs> For this game we're gonna play green because I feel it's a powerful starting deck well, not so much the deck because it's a horrible, inefficient mess, but uh, the potential for it. Anyway, we get into character creation here. What do we want our wizard to look like? There's a lot of different options. Uh, we can have this guy with this and this and I don't know. There's a lot of variation. Now, I've already decided on our character, which will be this guy in a toga wielding a sheet of paper <laughs> with these glasses this hair and there we are we have Adolf Hitler's gay cousin anyway he's named Sir Van Poppel let's get into the game and we start next to the White Castle hmm <laughs> 
Um, the purpose of this game is uh, we're a wizard, a fledgling wizard with a horrible inefficient deck. Um, and there's these five evil wizards who have taken over the land, one for each color. And you have to defeat every one of them in order to finish the game. Starting next to the tower doesn't really matter because there's no way we can handle it at the moment. Now, let's quickly go into our deck here. Um, we did start with a green deck, but because of our difficulty level we started with a couple of red spells as well. I really don't want them. So, we take them out and we see if they have anything useful to buy. Lenoir elves are quite decent, as well as another forest. Hurricane. It's an alright card, I guess. As well as a basilisk. Yeah, sure, we'll just pick everything up. You need a minimum of 40 cards to, um, to play a game. If you have less than that, the uh, the game will automatically um, throw in random land cards just to get to 40 cards. So we want to get to 40 cards as soon as possible to well make sure we can have at least a shot of winning. Now this guy wants us to bring a black creature spell south to Andos Hall. We'll get a black amulet as well as a mana link. Now, let me just explain this stuff to you here. These little icons are our amulets. There's one for each color. This is a form of currency. You can use them to buy cards at certain points. Uh, use them to use magic items. We start with one here. Um, as well as other good stuff. These are really, really useful to have. Other icons here are our golds which we spend most of it already buying those cards. This is our food here, which will slowly deplete until we die or buy some more stuff. This is our life, our mana links. We start with 10 and through quests like this we can get more. These are the cards we have in our deck and in total. So we'll accept the quest. We don't have a black creature spell yet, but I'm sure we'll find one in time. We have five days to complete it. Should be alright, huh? And we get some rumors. Right. Now, let me just quickly save the game here and get us into a fight. And then I can explain what this game is about. I should say I will probably reload multiple times. Probably now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do this. Uh, like I said, our starting deck is a horrible, inefficient mess, and uh, that was not fair. Let's try that again, shall we? Not much better, but oh well. Anyway, I've never played Magic before. This is, uh, like I said, a game centered around dueling wizards. The objective to the game is to kill off the enemy life points here. We start with 10, they start with 6. This is based on gift, uh, difficulty level and more powerful enemies will have more life points. I believe the, the final boss has like three or 400 life points and uh, we have 10, so yeah. Now, <laughs> in order to do anything in the game you have to use mana, which is produced using land cards. This here, the forest, will produce green mana, which is the mana centered around the deck we're using. So, in the main phase of the game here, these are our phases. It'll skip most of them, which are not useful to us now. In the main phase, we can play one land card a turn and cast any spells that we want. Now, we have two spells we can cast already, which are highlighted in yellow here. The Shanodin Dru uh, Dryads. If you look in the top right corner here, you'll see this little logo. This is the cost of the card. So this one costs one green mana. If we compare that to the Dirkwood Boars, for example, they cost one mana and four random points of mana. So five mana in total. Now, back to this card. It has 
a bit of flavor text here, and one special rule, which is forest walk. If the enemy has any forests, this creature cannot be blocked, which is quite a useful ability, especially considering we're fighting against a green opponent. Now, this is our the attack value of the card and the defensive value of the card. A 1-1 one -one is really not that good, but for now, it's a good starting card, because we can cast it in the first phase. Now, it skipped over the combat phase, that's because creatures you just summon have summoning sickness, which means they cannot attack in the first turn that they were cast. <coughs> now, what will the enemy do? He'll cast the Llanowar Elves, which is a really good card. It adds extra mana to your mana pool as a creature card. At this moment, he has two mana available. I only have one. Even worse, I have a red mana card, which means I probably cannot cast anything. We can cast the Wall of Wood. Wall cards are defensive cards. Now this one is really, really horrible. It's not that good. There's a low defense, specifically compared to the uh, the Wall of Ice here, which has a seven defense, but uh, only costs one mana. So anyway, we get into the combat phase. We can attack with our Dryads here. Now he has a forest. So a forest walk ability kicks in, and he cannot defend against it. We deal one point of damage. Now he has three mana already, let's see what it'll cost. Killer bees. That sucks, that's a good card. I want that one. Uh, we still cannot afford anything except for the wall of ice. And we'll attack again. <coughs> Now, this card has a pumping ability, meaning it'll get more powerful using extra mana. You use just one mana point to pump it up, and he'll cast a druid. Now, this card here is a flying creature, which means my walls, all of the walls I have, cannot block it. It can only be blocked by other flying creatures, or creatures which have a specific ability to block flying creatures. Now, fortunately, we just got a forest card meaning we can cast the Fairy Dragon here, which is a flying creature ourselves. And it has, as you can see, a high defense ability, so this will block the Killer Bees. Until he pumps it up, of course, but yeah, well. We'll cast that one, we'll attack again with our Dryads, and we'll have three life points left. Now, this is unfortunate. He has four mana. He has one more mana here, so that's five mana, plus he can untap a land and gain one more, so he'll have a potential of six mana points, which is six damage I really do not want to take, but he will be able to take out my fairy dragon, then I'll just let him go through, and it was a bluff. What will you cast now? He'll cast the boss. And we'll untap it, and a cast wall of wood. Now, I don't think he made the best play there. I let him through. He could have easily done six points of damage, which would have been smarter than casting the boss, which I could block with my wall of ice, but oh well, such is life. Now, we get the Venom card here, which means that any creature blocked by this card uh, will be destroyed at the end of the turn. This is an enchantment, which you will cast on top of another creature. Now, we could cast it on, for example, our Wall of Ice, and then anything it blocks will get destroyed, basically. Or we could cast it on our Fairy Dragon here, which means that whatever these Killer Bees do, I will be able to destroy them. I think I like the sound of that. So, we'll just keep chipping away at his health here. We really have no other way of, uh, of attacking him. Now he skipped over the combat phase, he is afraid of my dragon, so he's not gonna, uh, gonna be attacking. Now the Craw Worm, I'm not too afraid of him. So unless he's gonna attack with everything he has, which will be five creatures, I will be able to block everything he has, especially when I get these ones in here. There's no way he's gonna take me out at this point. Let's just do one more point of damage. He's gonna untap his desert. What does the desert do again? He's gonna deal one damage to my creature. Alright. 
So I'm gonna have to find another way to deal damage to him. <laughs> Alright, that sucks. Why did you use your... Hmm. Just arrange my cards. I'll get the elves in here. And he's gonna keep untapping his own magic. Yeah, oh, sure. Whatever. And we'll get the vipers in there. Now, we have two attacking creatures, which is really not enough. This is going to be a stalemate for a bow. You're not going to attack either. You're probably going to use your desert to kill my elves. No, you're not. Why do you keep activating this? I don't understand. Now. This is what I was waiting for. Regeneration. This is a good card. It means that uh, regeneration means that if your creature were to die, he'll um, if you pay your mana for it, he'll get up at the end of the turn. So what do we want to cast it on? Probably the fairy dragon. Most likely the fairy dragon. So what I'm gonna do now? He's definitely gonna block me this turn, but that really doesn't matter. He's gonna deal one point of damage, whoop if I can do. And he's gonna block with his killer bees, but that really doesn't matter because it's gonna die anyway. Now he's gonna pump it up. Sure. He's gonna pump it up some more. He's gonna pump it up some more. Yeah, right? So he's gonna do enough damage to kill me at this point. That doesn't matter. We have regeneration which we can activate. We live, it dies. So unless it gets another flying creature next turn, we will win. Hopefully. This uh, first match is going on for quite a while. Uh, nope. Let's see. I can do anything? Nope. And we win. Now we have a choice here. Do we want to take these cards, which we win off of him, or do we want a dungeon clue for these cards here. Uh, dungeons are special areas you will you can find in the game which house really rare cards but it's a bit difficult to get into them. For now I think we'll just take the cards. We'll find the dungeons at some point but we're not powerful enough to take them on anyway. I don't want to fight anything yet. Damn it! <laughs> And welcome back. I uh, kind of skipped that fight because I wanted to close up. I won and I got a few uh, few cards. The giant Badger is, uh, is quite fun, as well as the Fox Bell. Anyway, let's take these cards and we get plus one life in the next duel. Yay. Anyway, let's head into town if I can. Thank you. I thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna check my recording uh, settings here, see if the sound is alright. I've had a bit of uh, trouble getting the sound to work correctly. So I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you the next time. Bye bye.